Though R. Kelly's career was only two years old in 1993 and should by industry standards have still been fledgling his status as an overnight superstar felt as natural to R&B fans as his music did to their ears. Kelly was a breed apart from the one-hit wonder that had dominated the early 1990s New Jack movement, principally because he defied that label by continually producing hits. Additionally, Kelly was drawing ready comparisons to Prince based on his extraordinary talents, both on stage and in the studio behind the boards. Not only could he dazzle audiences of screaming women night after night, but he also dazzled record executives with his ability to compose and produce top 10 hits, as well as play the majority of their instrumentation single-handedly. Kelly was a true pop prodigy, but the mystery of his talent went beyond conventional pondering. He had no mentor that could be publicly identified, as fellow R&B crossover phenomenon Michael Jackson had in his early years with Barry Gordy and Quincy Jones, nor did he have a distinctive root in one musical style. Rather, Kelly blended both theme and rhythm into a perfect pop medium that allowed him to cross the musical map from gospel to funk, from the church to the bedroom, all within the same time and song. From Kelly's point of view, the varying and often conflicting lyrical content of his songs were, in the end, all bound through the chameleon-like musical foundation that hid beneath each seductive or soul-searching track, such that, according to Kelly, if you take away the sexy bump and grind, you can put in gospel lyrics. The secret to Kelly's immediate and massive success lay in his ability to construct instrumental tracks that were irresistible to any confessing ear. Whether in the context of a prayer to God or a profession of desire, Kelly had built his own temple of erotic devotion and millions of young, impressionable women were coming to worship. By the winter of 1993, R. Kelly's career as a solo artist was in full flourish. His debut LP 12 play was released in November, following his group Public Announcement's debut Born into the 90s. Certified platinum by the early spring and triple platinum by the summer of 1994, Kelly had quickly begun to distinguish himself from the mediocre pool of R&B leftovers from the late 1980s, like Bobby Brown, whose follow-ups to smash hits like Don't Be Cruel were underperforming. As well, he stood apart from the newer crop of recruits like Color Me Bad and Silk, who were turning out to be one-hit wonders as R&B was still finding its commercial footing in the early part of the new decade. As a result, Kelly was, in essence, charting a new course for the top 40 R&B hits by creating his own genre of crossover. One that perfectly mixed the traditional components of R&B hits with a new sexual boldness that did away with the need for subtlety. Kelly's sound was uninhibited, erotically timed to perfection, vocally precise in conviction, and too rhythmically smooth for any listening ear to resist such that the freedom he created in his process allowed Kelly to musically soar, taking his career right along for the ride. 